Hey guys, I'm back and today I just want to make a quick update and I hope you guys like the new logo and new channel name and let's get on to it. So today we have the 2014 mid retina macbook pro 15 inch and i you guys probably see my old video where i said i was using a 2011 macbook 13 inch then i got the gaming laptop which is the link above you can check that out and i sold that one because i realized i don't do much gaming and i really like iMovie so I was on Kijiji and I found a seller selling this practically brand new MacBook Pro with 17 inch and so far I'm loving it and today I'm gonna tell you why I think this is the best MacBook 15 inch you can buy even comparing to the new ones so to begin with i'm just gonna show you around one of the top reason why i picked this over the other gen the newer generations first is the price second is ports these older not older but the 2016 2015 2014 all these years have a thinner profile and all these have the max safe it's great because they don't have that anymore they use USB-C and then the port two of them so you could technically still use this for external GPU USB 3.0 and headphone jack and like I told you they removed the battery indicator where my older video in the 2011 versions 2012 I think up to then they remove it they remove that indicator there's no more indicator light and I have a case here, but and move on to the other side. Just a simple SD card slot, an HDMI port, and a USB. Sorry, there you go. Oh, my camera's not focusing. Sorry about that. So, that's pretty much it. So let's so let's turn it on and see. The keyboard fuse about the same about the same as the old one I have there's not much great tactile feedback and speakers to side of it these sounds great by the way I'll do a test video and the trackpad is one of the best it's not the hectic feedback ones it's still the clicky version I kind of like it it doesn't bother me I know the new one ones are huge this one take up like one third of the space but I don't really need that big of a touchpad really I can do most of the thing with this so to get on with why I think this is one of the best first is the port like I said second the price and for the version I got this is not the dual graphic one this has this is the one just with the Intel Iris Pro this is the weaker model but it still perform amazingly with the newest mac os and if my 2011 was doing pretty well i didn't see any stutter this thing runs mac os exactly the way they want you to run it so this is running on a 2.2 gigahertz intel core i7 16 gig of ram and like i said the graphic card is only single one which is the intel integrated intel iris pro if you guys want to buy the mid 2014 i think even the 13 all the way up to the 16 they have some model that have optional where you could add a dual uh graphic card with an intel i mean not intel sorry with the radeon graphic card r9 i think 260 or the gtx 750m and the newer version as well but you want to check that out if you are looking for a MacBook Pro 15 inch older versions. First, these one does come with pretty much standard where they all come with SSD card. I, that's what I think. I don't think they come with anything lower. And I boot camp this so I can do some 
gaming still but i don't really do that much so let's do a test so let me close the iMovie map it loads amazingly quick there's absolutely no stutter or any kind of lag in this macbook it's there's no reason for for me i played around with the newer models ones i mean there is a speed bump if you do really intensive work but even iMovie never struggle or even slow down there's no need for most of average people like us that is not really really into all these graphic designer and stuff that there's absolutely no need to go past this macbook at this moment because the price is insane obviously and also these are going down in prices i think i got this for one thousand dollar canadian i mean it's a pretty damn good deal for 2014 macbook and i would not trade this for a newer one even i mean i would but honestly the one reason i love the newer ones is the color the space gray and i really wish they bring it to even the lowest model i think the model cheapest model they have doesn't even give you a matte space gray they force you to keep this old aluminum look which is great but i mean you expect buying a 2018 macbook pro you would expect at least they give you a color choice but nope so you're stuck with that and let's test the speaker it happens quite often okay. this one also comes with the intel graphic 3000 so gaming on this machine loud. don't really think about it because maybe a couple years ago it'd be fine but it's loud enough way louder than my old macbook so for most people they don't really need more than this and this is great for school school doing work doing pretty much anything you can throw at this the s spec of this macbook is still pretty high end consider my 2011 macbook is still keeping up with mac os decently s still keep it relatively smooth and if that thing still lasts and still keeping supportive till seven years later, I it could probably go up to 10 years. This is only 2014, so you would expect this to last you at least to 2020 or a couple years after that. So it's well worth the price, just having USB alone. Even though for some of us, Low, most of the people could buy adapter for the USB-C with a hub where do a lot of USB port but I mean if you're already spending two three thousand dollars on a MacBook I wish they would at least throw in a USB uh, C adapter of some kind but you know it's Apple being Apple they would never do that and they force you to buy accessory upon accessory and like these cables, I, I heard a lot of horror story about these older generations, not older generation, but like these accessories they sell are pretty damn cheap. These end usually break off, same with lightning port, and I wish they build like a more like a nylon material so people don't damage these. But I mean, they make a lot from selling accessory to us. So that's another topic about Apple. With that said, I don't do much gaming, so I'm not gonna do a gaming Mac uh, test in this MacBook. But I did try running Fortnite on the Windows 7 on it. It did relatively well, but I wouldn't recommend it because these MacBooks aren't designed for long-term gaming, and this thing heats up insanely. Like this thing turned to, I think it went up to 96 Celsius. I don't know if that for Fahrenheit, but I will convert it here. So yeah, gaming is not the best because they don't have the best cooling like my gaming laptop, which is the link above. You can check it out. So to end this video off, here's why I think this is the best MacBook you can get today.
First, it has more USB ports. Second, price is cheaper. There, this probably will keep up with the newer MacBook for a couple years. And you still get the beautiful Retina display. This is one of the most complained when I had the 2011. But I think anything 2012 up will have a Retina display. But the older one, obviously the processor is the first generation to support the Retina higher resolution. So it's a bit slower. My friend has a 2012 version of this. It's not much slower, but it is it is slow. You can tell the difference. And I would recommend getting not the 2012 version, maybe a 2013, late 2013 or 2014 if you're planning to keep this. And this is your only laptop to do all your work. I hope you guys like the video. Thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. Sub if you loved it. Thank you so much. See you guys next video. Peace.